Hi, I'm Laura from Meadow Art Violin and welcome to my Song of the Month video tutorial. You can get the free sheet music for this song along with the scale warm-up at my website and I'll put the link below. And while you're there, you can sign up for my newsletter so that you can get the Song of the Month sent directly to your inbox. Of course, like and subscribe to this video. That really helps out my standings in YouTube. This month's song is Swallowtail Jig which is a really famous fiddle tune for a good reason. It's a lot of fun to play. So like most jigs, this song is in 6-8 time. That means there's the eighth note gets the beat, and there's six eighth notes in a measure. And you'll notice it's always divided into two groups of three. So let's start off with our scale. We're in the key of E minor, actually. So our scale is a E melodic minor scale. That means we're going to raise the sixth and the seventh scale degrees on the ascending part of the scale and naturalize the sixth and seventh scale degrees on the descending part of the scale. If that sounds confusing, then you can sign up for my scale course where I'll explain it a lot better. But for now, you're gonna have a C sharp and a D sharp on the way up, and then a D natural and a C natural on the way down. And what you wanna do is when you're going up, you play C sharp, D sharp, fourth finger E, while you're playing that fourth finger E, that's when you're moving your third and second finger back to the natural notes. You also want to work on being able to keep one finger down on two strings. So for instance, measure seven of the scale. In between seven and eight, you're going from an F sharp to a first finger E. And what I want you to do is when you go F sharp E, I want you to actually put your first finger E on the D string and the A string so that your finger's covering the E and the B. Because when you get to the arpeggio, keeping your finger down on the D string and the A string at the same time means all you have to do is play your third and fourth finger because you've already got the one down. And when you're playing the same finger on two strings, that's when the one time it's okay to kind of flatten that knuckle. Now you can also rock back and forth if you find it hard to flatten your finger, that's an option as well. So let's try playing the scale in our arpeggio with the metronome at 60, okay? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, ready, go. Feel free to slow it down using that little cog wheel and slowing down the playback speed. Now let's move on to the actual song. So you're going to notice that there's a couple places here where we want to keep our first finger down on the D and A string. The very first measure is a good example. On the first measure, do you see how you go G, E, E, and then you skip over the A string for that one note, that B, and then you go back to the E. So when you start this song, start it with your first finger on both strings at once. That way you can go. All you have to do is move your bow. And you may kind of like add a little bit more pressure. You can kind of swing a little bit even when your finger is flat on both strings. Kind of swing a little bit to add more pressure to whichever one you're playing on. Another thing with this song is the string crossings. You'll notice the pattern is you're often going to the A string just for one note and then back to the D string. So to make those nice and clean, like measure one again, you can stop the bow, pivot to the next string, play the note, stop, pivot, stop, pivot. That's gonna help you have really cl clean and clear string crossings like this. It's kind of annoying, but practice all those string crossing measures like that. It will help make them nice and clean. And you also want to think about using your wrist more to do these string crossings as you get it faster. Let me show you. You see how I'm using more of my wrist just to dip down? My arm is more or less staying just on the D string level. And that'll come more naturally as you get faster. It's a little hard to do when you do it really slow. Another thing going on is some hooked bowings. Look at measure six. You've got two up bows in a row. And these aren't slurred. I like to add a little stop in my bow in between those two up bows. That gives it a nice peppy feeling like this. So I'm just barely
barely stopping my bow, then continuing on with the up bow. In the B part, starting at measure 10, we've got some slurs that kind of makes it sound um, a little different than the A part, a little smoother. And we've got more hooked bowings. So measure 10 and 11, you've got hooked bow up, up, and then a hooked bow down, down. So here's measure 10. And if that's confusing you, make the stop in between the hooked bows really long while you're practicing it. Right? That way you can really teach your arm exactly what you want it to do. Feel free to take as much time in between those notes as you want. Now, the probably the big thing overall with this song is it's a lot of notes, a lot of fast eighth notes. And here's a technique to get fast eighth notes feeling really comfortable with your left hand. So you'll notice it's always divided into groups of three. So you can practice it this way by imposing these rhythms on it. So for instance, for each grouping, try playing through with the whole thing once and making the first note longer and the next two notes shorter. So long, short, short, long, short, short, like this. Ignore the pickup note, but... <laughs> And you can make the long note as long as you want, as long as the short notes are short. You can play with that rhythm any way you want. Then flip-flop it, make the first two notes short, the last one long. Short, short, long, short, short, long. Play through the whole thing like that. Now the last one's the most fun. Make the middle note the long one. So short, long, short, short, long, short, short, long. And what you're doing when you do those different rhythms is that you're speeding up all the notes, but just not all at once. You're speeding up these two notes, then you speed up these two notes, then these two notes. And you'll find that you make it harder on yourself by doing those rhythms. But then when you go back and play it without the rhythms, it seems easier. And it's going to really help your fingers with their coordination. It's going to really clean up any tricky passages. This is a great tool to use for any passage where you have lots of fast notes like that. Last little thing I want to talk about before we try playing through is some ornaments that I like to add in. So in the B part, it's really fun to add in some slides. So I like adding in a slide on measure 11. When I'm going from the E to the F sharp at the beginning of that measure, I slide into the F sharp. And all I do is I start on a, like a low one, an F natural, and slide it into the F sharp like this. This is measure 10. And if you're sliding, then it, it might be a little harder to do that hooked bowing, so you can slur it there. So you can add in those slides. Uh, another place I like to add an ornament is like the very last measure. It's printed just like this, G, E, E, E. I like to add a little turn or a little grace note on the G. So all I do is I play the G and then I just flick my fourth finger down and go right back to the G. So it's just G, A, G, and then back to what's printed. So, all right, don't try to be really in tune, just flick it down, just tap the string. And then as long as you keep your third finger down, you'll go right back to the G. So like that. So practice tapping your finger. That's a great workout for the pinky. I've also made a duet part for this song. And you can find that music on my website as well. And it's got just a little easier part for the violin too. And I suggest you try playing this one along with the recording. So let's play through it now and you can pick which part you want to play along with. The metronome will be at 60. One, two, three, four, five, six, ready, go.
the song of the month, please write in the comments below and let me know what other songs you would like to learn. While you're here, you can check out this video or maybe this video and please like and subscribe. I'm Laura from Meadowlark Violin. Happy practicing.